Savannah Whitaker's songwriting approach comes from her deeply rooted faith and raw, honest emotion. She put her faith to the test when she entered and won the Rising Star Singing Competition sponsored by Pulse FM. Congratulations, Thank girl. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Congratulations to you. I mean, how many people did you have to compete with or do you even remember? I don't even know. I think it was up there in the 50s, 60s, wow. 70s. I honestly have no idea. Okay, and how many rounds did you go? I think there were five Five to six rounds. Okay, so when you got to like the fifth or sixth round, were you like, I don't know what else to do for you. I, I'm just, I, <laughs> or did, do you have a lot of music in you that you're just waiting to get out? I grew up on the stage. My mom and dad were worship leaders growing okay. up. And so music is something that's always been a huge part of my life. And so it just, and it comes easy to me. Mm -hmm. And so I could sing all day long, but I prefer to sing in my room by myself, <laughs> <laughs> not in front of a lot of people. But that's when I know that I've been called to a high standard and have a purpose to share my story and share my music. Oh, so. Okay. so what was it like when you were there and, you know, the, the final results were in and they announced who the winner of, of Rising Star was? It was un unreal. The talent level that night and throughout the whole competition was the, the standard and the bar was set real high. Mm -hmm. And it was an honor to compete with such musicians who have a heart for the music and heart to serve the Lord and share their story and share their music as well. Um, when I found out it was I was the lucky winner, I knew um, this is the beginning of something that I've always dreamed of, but didn't realize that I was really in such a time as this, as it talks mm -hmm. about in Esther. Mm. Oh, so that's it a, was crazy. That's a it good comparison. Crazy. Um, what was your prize package? Um, I got to sing the national anthem um, both nights at World Pulse Fest, and then also I was um, given to sing a song of my choice on Saturday night. And what did you perform? I performed a song that I wrote in January called Blameless. Blameless. Now, Savannah, we're like just so happy for you that you won, but there was a time just this time last year, things weren't going great for you. Tell us about that. Absolutely. I thought this was an incredible story to go from what you're about to say to, you know, being on the national stage. Absolutely. So I was about a year ago um, sleeping in different churches and sleeping, camping in my best friend's um, backyard and um, sleeping kind of on all different places. So it was basically homeless to rising star. Mm -hmm. And um, most out of my own repercussions of my actions of a life that I just hadn't fully committed to the Lord yet with hands held high, but um, when he brought me to my rock bottom, my life started to make a monumental shift in a point of hands were full high, hands were in full surrender, and things started to just change. Mm. Um, mm. And my heart for him just, and my desire for him grew, and um, blessings poured down to a point where it was so overwhelming, all I could do was stand in awe. Wow. I'm sure that uh, during that rough time, though, you possibly will sense that you know God still was was there, even though you were kind of off off the path a bit and, and uh, off target. But uh, what was it that you know inside that kind of was that that turning point that brought you to that kind of uh, aha moment of, you know, I think I better just give my life over to Jesus again. There's, there was there's, I think the the moment that I realized that I didn't want to be hopeless anymore. I wanted mm -hmm. to be helpless and could only rely on him for my hope. Um, when you live a life that I lived with habitual sin and sin and sin and sin, and you finally get caught to a point where you literally have nothing, you're walking home from a meeting, your phone is off, it's freezing cold, it's in the dead of winter, and you, I, I had the option. I literally was sitting in a house and I, I had death or life, um, mm. suicide mm. or life. And wow. when you're at your lowest point, you, you just don't really know what to do. And there's 13 hours of that day that I cannot account for. Mm. And I woke up the next day with arms held high and said, Jesus, mm. you are wow. my Lord and Savior. And just repent, repent, repent. Mm. So did, uh, okay. did you feel you couldn't go back to your parents? My parents are 1,500 miles away, and so oh. they live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and it's not that I couldn't go back to them. Um, I was told, I left school to come here for an internship in 2014, mm -hmm. and my dad told me before I came here, he said, if you're going to come here, you're going to need to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I've been so blessed with people who have come alongside me and loved me through everything and just pushed me towards the cross and pushed me toward the Lord and just showed authentic love from Harvest Bible Chapel to LifeWorks to Debbie to all of these wonderful people that have been nothing but unconditional with their love. So it wasn't that I couldn't go back to my parents. It's mm -hmm. just that I didn't. You felt the need to, to 
find find the way. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, now the music that you write, uh, where does that come from? Where's some of oh, the Oh, I know where it comes from. <laughs> I think she just told us yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. part of it anyway, right? It, it comes from, I have a very, I have a story that a lot of people can, I can relate with a lot of people, and I have mm -hmm. a story that I want to share God's, um, God's grace has just lavished down on my life. And I was so far off the beaten path. I wandered for so long, mm -hmm. but his grace was, uh, it, it never wavered. It, mm -hmm. um, it was unrelenting and his love just pursued me relentlessly and relentlessly wow. and relentlessly and knocked on my heart for so long. And a lot of my music comes from that place of brokenness, but with the hope of but God is still right there, but yeah. God is still merciful, but God still loves me no matter what I've done, but God forgave me, but mm -hmm. God redeemed me. But, and so that's where a lot of it comes from. And you also sing and play at the same time, right? Yes, ma'am. What's yeah. your favorite um, instrument? Uh, <laughs> my favorite talk. instrument is actually the piano. Oh, I okay. started playing the piano when I was eight years old, and that is my first love, but obviously you can't pick up a grand piano and walk around with it. Not easy um, to carry around. Yeah. Not very easy to carry around, no. So I taught myself how to play guitar, mm -hmm. and. Um, that's a little easier to carry around than picking up a piano. And you do some work with uh, is it the Boys boys and Girls Club? I do, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I'm a youth development associate, so I work with um, kids who are, have behavioral issues, um, foster kids, adopted kids. Um, I'm adopted myself, so that's kind of living out my purpose and wow. loving on the people who feel like they're less fortunate or forgotten or abandoned and kind of showing them that their so dreams are possible. So you can relate and they can relate. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Savannah, I asked you during World Pulse Festival if you had any plans of auditioning for America's Got, America's Got Talent or one of the, you know, the voice shows. The voice yeah. shows. And what say you? Have you changed your mind about that? <laughs> no, I have not. I am um, extremely content with where the Lord has me right now. And um, if he calls me to a higher stage, I, I know I must fully rely on him because this is not my forte. This is not my strong suit. But um, I am waking up and saying yes every day. And whatever that means, um, I will do it. But as of right now, there's no auditioning for The Voice or America's Got Talent. <laughs> well, Savannah, we, we have about 30 seconds left. Would you just kind of just speak a word of encouragement to someone who's listening and may feel down and out? I mean, you really came from a rough spot. Absolutely. Um, surely you have something. Absolutely. You God say. uses broken people, and um, we're all broken. We've all fallen short. We fall short daily. But um, the moment that you realize and the moment that you raise your hands held high and say, Lord, I need you, and I can't do this anymore by myself, um, no matter what it is, from just homeless or to um, anything that you're walking through, there's so much hope, yeah. and it's not worth giving up. He's standing right beside you, and hand in hand, he's going to soldier on with you. He's never going to leave you. Wow. Well amen. said. I'll just say a to, amen to that. To connect with Savannah, go to facebook.com backslash Savannah Whitaker or go to harvest-tv.com. Coming up later in today's Connections, Pastor Mark Lance shares how we can all be creative. But first, here is Savannah Whitaker performing, performing Blameless from World Pulse Festival. Thank you so much. I'm going to sing a song I wrote a couple months ago. Drowning in my sin, not even knowing what lies within. I'm covered in guilt and shame, no need to run from the cross. He knows my name. Oh, 
righteousness He's looking down into my brokenness I'm blameless, forgiven Greater is He I'm redeemed children of the one true King. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back.